Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do on-page SEO like a pro. And here's the cool part. I'm not just going to throw some generic tips at you. Instead, I'm going to show you real life examples of how to do this on real businesses. Let's get started. Hey, I'm Nathan Gotch, the founder of Gotch SEO, and I've trained thousands of SEO professionals and have personally led hundreds of successful SEO campaigns. So if you're new here, this is part five of this free SEO mastery training series. The previous lessons are below this video, so make sure you watch those after you finish this one. And don't forget to subscribe because you don't wanna miss what's coming next in this training series. So let's dive right in. So for this first on-page SEO recommendations, I'm going to be analyzing Plumbing Boys, which is just a local business in Los Angeles. So I went and searched this exact keyword here, Emergency Plumber Los Angeles, and then I went super far back and found this website that wasn't ranking super well. So what we wanna do is we want to figure out how we can improve this page so that they can improve their performance for Emergency Plumber Los Angeles. So one of the cool things you can do is you can click on View SERP and you'll actually see the live results for this particular keyword. And as we go down here, we'll see that this example here that we're using, it they're pretty far down. They're probably on the second or third page possibly. So they have a lot of room for improvement. And we don't even really need to use SEMrush at this point, as long as we understand what the key components of on-page SEO are. So before we even start using the tools at all, we can immediately just look at this page as a whole and see where the issues are in regards to on-page SEO and just the content in general. So looking at this, they have 24 seven emergency services service, but the core keyword that they're going after is emergency plumber Los Angeles or Los Angeles emergency plumber, any variation of that nature. So that needs to actually be in the H1 tag. That's very, very important. And then on top of it, when we look at this, Los Angeles is mentioned a few times here, but overall it needs to be mentioned more than what they're currently doing. And also the content itself is very, very short. And there are also some conversion rate optimization issues that need to be considered as well as you have a phone number right here that isn't even clickable. So when someone visits this website on mobile, they're not even gonna be able to call. And it's the same right here too. So what would happen is they're actually gonna have to dial this number into their phone instead of just clicking it and being able to call immediately. So this is definitely gonna be hurting their conversion rate overall. And then on top of it, having this generic stock photo here is just not ideal because what it's doing is it's pushing the important content below the fold. And that's not what we want. On top of this, when it comes to images, we want everything to be unique. So even if you are gonna use a stock photo, you should still make this photo unique to the brand. So you could take this photo, put it into Canva, put a little background, and now that photo has become unique, even though it is technically a stock photo, but now it's actually unique because you've gone through and added a little branding to it, a little corporate identity to it. That's really important. But from a pure content perspective, there's a lot of room for improvement here. I wouldn't even need to use the tools to know that we need to beef this page up more and we need to optimize it better. Our core keyword needs to be in the title, it needs to be in the URL if possible. In this case, it might be difficult to squeeze into the URL. Number three is it needs to be in the H1, it needs to be in the first sentence. It's not really in there, they do mention Los Angeles. And then it also needs to be possibly in the first H2 tag, so you'd have some sort of variation there. And then you also have it in the last sentence. But right now, a lot of room for improvement right here. So let's go ahead and see what SEMrush is saying. So when you look at this keyword, you'll see it has 140 searches per month, which is pretty typical for local terms, that's not a bad thing. And then the difficulty is about 19%. So it's pretty easy. It's not gonna require a ton of links to be able to rank. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna go over here and we wanna run this through the SEO content template. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna give us a bunch of recommendations for this page that we're trying to optimize. So we'll go down here and SEMrush is gonna give you important recommendations here as far as semantically related keywords. So you're gonna to wanna to try to get these into the content itself. But before you even think about doing that, what really matters is hitting this ideal text length here, which is 716 words. So when we open up the SEO writing assistant, which you can find right here under content marketing dashboard, I threw their content here just to see where they're at. And when we see overall, there's a lot of room for improvement on both readability SEO and originality. So if this was the website we were working on, we would scrap this, start from scratch and focus on hitting that word count down here. So we want to hit that 716 words at a bare minimum. And we also want to include our most important important keywords a few times and some additional keywords that are topically relevant as well. So, and then they also recommend a bunch of other things like adding links to your posts can make it more authoritative and useful to your readers. This is in regards to internal links and also external links. So if you talk about something that you could reference a .eu or a .gov, that could increase the traffic.
trust to the page a little bit more. But overall, this is the type of situation where we would be building from scratch. So revise this content, create a content brief with the proper keyword placement, and then overall hit the correct word count and make that content 100% unique and relevant to what the keyword phrase is. So when someone's searching emergency plumber in Los Angeles, it's a pretty urgent situation. So we need to give them the information that they need right away. We're not going to be trying to educate them because this is not a top of the funnel keyword. What we want to do is we want to show them that we're the right choice for them so that they get in touch with us. And so that's where a lot of people make mistakes. They focus on creating just a ton of content. A lot of it will be informational in nature, but that's a huge mistake because this keyword is at the bottom of the funnel. So we want to provide content that's going to persuade that searcher to want to become a lead. And so that's going to be case studies and results and testimonials and maybe even a possible hiring guide, like seven mistakes people make when hiring emergency plumbers. And there could also be an FAQ section. So anything that's going to be more that bottom of the funnel type of content is going to be really useful on this particular page. And of course, make it super readable, make it easy to digest and scan. And that's important. So ton of opportunity on this page to improve. And just with some adjustments, some additional content, kind of start from scratch here, this page will do dramatically better. So for this next analysis, we're going to be looking at the keyword SEO tool. So I wanted to do one that was much more competitive than the previous one. And so as you can see here, it's 92% keyword difficulty. So very, very difficult. And the page that I'm going to try to attempt to help as far as on-page SEO is going to actually be SEMrush. So we're going to look through here and we'll go ahead and look at the results. And you'll see that there are many, many websites ranking here that are not as powerful as SEMrush. So ultimately, SEMrush should be able to rank for this based upon how powerful their website is from a backlink perspective and ultimately a trust perspective. Like it's a highly trusted tool. And there are many competitors here who are honestly beating them at this point. Now, the part that's really interesting is when we think about how would we go about ranking for this particular keyword? Well, when we look at the results, we'll go ahead and look at the SERPs. You'll see something really fascinating. So there are many of SEMrush's competitors are ranking here, but the part that's interesting is that they're not ranking their homepage. They're not ranking transactional pages. They're actually ranking really informational assets. So up here at Moz, you know, they have free SEO checkers and premium search tools. So they're actually ranking their free SEO tools page. You have Buffer that's ranking a free SEO tools page. You have Neil Patel, who's also ranking a free SEO tools page. And then the list goes on and on. Ahrefs is doing the same thing, Backlinko. They're all really doing the same thing. But then when we go down here, we'll see that SEMrush is really only one of maybe two or three who aren't actually trying to rank a specific page dedicated to SEO tool or SEO tools. They're just hoping that their homepage is powerful enough to kind of push everyone out of the way. But clearly, based on Google's data, they've decided decided that the best types of pages for this particular keyword to satisfy the intent correctly is to have a type of list post or something a little more informational in nature. So that's what I would personally do if I was leading this is I would try to optimize an informational piece of content and then include SEMrush in that list. And you can even do somewhat of a comparison of why SEMrush is better than X or Y. But that's kind of the first thing. Now, that would change the whole dynamic of how we would optimize for that particular keyword. But we can just go ahead and see some targets that we would want to look at. So we can go to the SEO content template like we did in the previous one and start to see what are some of the semantically related keywords. So we we'll want to be tackling all of these relevant keywords in the content. But once again, we want to look at the text length because this is where we start. We start with a target length that we want to hit, and this is going to be based on the average for the top 10. So this is our target and we want to hit that target because if we do, we know, okay, we have the appropriate word count. So if we're still not ranking, then it's probably something else. But this is a way for us to deduce what is the thing holding us back, right? At this point, when we look at it, I took the content from SEMrush's homepage and I threw it into here and you'll see it's kind of just some random stuff in here. So it can be a little distorted, but overall, even then current word count is not sufficient to rank, even though I took a bunch of filler words. And there's a lot of stuff in here, like they need to rewrite hard to read sentences. They need to replace too many complex words. There's a lot of things, but even just looking from a general perspective, like if we wanted to rank for the keyword SEO tool, well, if we go to the SEMrush homepage and we look for SEO tool, it's only mentioned a couple times here, right? It's not mentioned very much at all. And it's not mentioned in critical spots that it would need to be in. That's one thing. And the thing with SEMrush, maybe they don't want to rank for SEO tool in the 
homepage, maybe the homepage is serving different purposes. That's totally fine too, but that's why going back to the original strategy where we would create an informational piece of content, which is exactly what Google is basically telling us we should create, that's when you can start to optimize that specific page for that exact keyword, a really, really lucrative keyword for this particular company. So this is the way that I go about doing it. And ultimately, one of the worst things you can do is do on-page SEO on a page that isn't even A, the right page, and B, isn't serving the right intent. And going through and trying to make that better is a waste of time. What you need to do is make sure it's the right page that is optimized for the appropriate intent. And ultimately, look to Google, look to the competition, see what they're doing, and don't try to reinvent the wheel, right? I mean, Google is telling us clearly, I mean, as clear as day, that the type of content that it wants to rank for this particular keyword is informational in nature and there isn't a single homepage ranking in the top 10. So that should give enough evidence alone that that's the correct path to go. So sometimes you just need to revise the overall keyword targeting strategy and map the keywords to the appropriate page. And if you don't have the appropriate page, then you need to go out there and create it using the guidelines that SEMrush provides, which makes it much easier because you can just grab the exact word count and then from there, create something that's different and better than what currently exists. That's how I'd go about doing it. So the last page and keyword I'm gonna be analyzing here is actually for Hello Kitty keyboards. So this is just a random one that I was able to find. And the page that we're going to be looking at here is this page here. And they're doing pretty well already. They're sitting at the first page or so, bottom of the first page if we look at the SERPs. So they're doing pretty well. So with just some slight tweaks and some better optimization, they should be able to get really better positioning than they're currently at. So looking at this, this isn't a super competitive keyword, but just by increasing the rankings by two, three, maybe even five spots, they're going to get substantially more organic search traffic. So let's look at a couple things here. We'll look at the SEO content template for this particular keyword here. And what we're going to see is there's some opportunities to add more semantically related keywords, but overall the websites and pages that are ranking here, their content is not super comprehensive. And that's apparent when we look at the recommended text length, which is 371 words. So we don't need to create a super long asset to be able to rank for this, but we do need to at least hit this minimum target and then optimize the page appropriately. So what we can do is we'll go and throw that content into the SEO writing assistant once again. And I put their content in based on this. I just went ahead and copied the content, put it into here. And as you can tell, it's just very short. So it's only about 64 words. And I even included all the filler words as well. So the first thing to do here, once once again, is hit that word count. That's the easiest thing that we can do. Hit that word count and then place the most critical keywords, which is Hello Kitty keyboard. We'll copy that and we'll look. So the title is optimized for Hello Kitty keyboard, which is perfect. And that's really good already. And then Hello Kitty USB cartoon keyboard. So this is pretty close to where it needs to be overall. So not anything too alarming on that front. You could of course change it a little bit. We'd want to also optimize the images as well. So we can do inspect and see if they've actually optimize the images for that. So when we look at the alt tag, it is optimized well. So that means that you have a better chance of performing well in Google's image search. But then we go down here, there's just not very much content. So if they can add some additional content here, possibly drive more reviews, then this page should perform much better. It shouldn't be very difficult considering the competition is not super difficult. So sometimes on-page SEO isn't actually about jamming a bunch of keywords in there. We obviously need to get it in the appropriate spots, but a lot of the time there's just pages that are just lacking content. So we just need to add more content to this page and it will do substantially better. So that is how you do on-page SEO like a pro. If you got value from this video, make sure you like it, subscribe, and drop a comment below. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to create SEO content that actually ranks every single time. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.